Hi guys, Grant from beyondbeaver.com where I teach you how to build websites ridiculously fast. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can conditionally hide things on your page using URL parameters. Now what do I mean by that? The best way to describe this is to just show you guys. So here I'm using the Beaver Builder Page Builder plugin for WordPress, which allows you to drag and drop and build uh, websites. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to have two different types of pricing. So we're going to have one, which is our standard pricing, which is this one here. And then we're going to have a separate one, which we secretly give to our partners. So partners being people that promote our products. Uh, so they'll get a different sort of pricing scheme. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this standard pricing here with the pricing table. But then we're going to add a variable up into our URL like this. So plan equals partner and let's just so it's the same page it's forward slash pricing which is this page here with the standard pricing except we're going to add this parameter here and we'll just click enter and notice how that pricing table changes and you can see here the pricings for the partners is 50 percent off the standard price so 25 instead of 50 dollars and so on now again if we just remove that and click enter to the standard pricing table. Now what we're doing here is we're showing and hiding the pricing table depending on whether or not there's that URL up there. So why would you want to do this? What are the benefits? The benefits are you can create one pricing table page but then conditionally show the content on that page for whoever's going to that page. So I'll show you guys how to do that and we're going to be doing it using the post filter, uh, body class filter uh, that's included in WordPress core. And it is, it is one of my favorite things about WordPress. I use it all the time. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to create the two different pricing tables. The one that we're gonna show as standard and the one that we're gonna show as the partners. So let's go ahead and launch Beaver Builder by clicking this page builder uh, icon up the top and that's gonna initiate uh, Beaver Builder for this page. So we're just gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna show you guys how to build the other different pages in case you guys have not been exposed to Beaver Builder before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a row with one column, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag in a heading module to give the pricing table a heading. So this is gonna be our standard pricing. And the style, we're just gonna center align it. And I'll save that module. Okay, and now let's add our pricing table module. So under the advanced, there's a pricing table uh, module. Let's just drag that in and we'll just create three dummy plans. So uh, plan, price, 19, uh, duration forever. Everybody likes unlimited licenses. Uh, feature, just add a couple of them. Uh, we we'll also want to go back in, let's just change the color. So standard pricing, uh, let's make it standard. Let's just make it a blue. And then we'll just uh, maybe create three of them. Okay, so let's just remember standard pricing. So the pricing that will be displayed publicly will be the blue. Okay, there it is. Okay, there's our standard. Now we're going to want to duplicate it. So let's just click the duplicate row up the top and we'll create a separate uh, pricing row for our partner pricing. <sighs> okay, so let's just edit that module. Okay, so let's just edit the heading module. We'll just uh, call it partner pricing. So there it is. Uh, let's just give it a different colored background just so, again for the tutorial. So you can see that when we do put in the query, um, when we do put in the arguments in the URL, it does in fact change the row. Gray. Okay, now it's adding the uh, pricing table module. Now partner pricing, let's just assume it's gonna be less. So let's just make it $9 instead of 19. A good discount, we'll keep it the same. Uh, and just to show you guys, we'll change the color from a blue to a black. Now what I'll do is I'll just delete these other two 
duplicate the black. And there we go. So just to review, we have two rows, one for the standard, one for the partner. The partner has a gray background and it switches from the blue of the standard to the black and $9 instead of 19. Okay, awesome, there's our two rows. So we're gonna to toggle these. So by default, standard will show, and if we add a parameter into the URL, we're gonna hide this and show this one. So this one will be hidden by default, and this one will be shown. But if there's a variable, then it reverses, and this one hides, and this one shows. So what we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna to wanna to target these using CSS. So let's just, go into this one and we'll just edit this standard pricing row by clicking the, the wrench icon up here and we'll just give it a class. Okay, so let's just go down here in the advanced tab under CSS class and let's just give it our own class, SF. Um, so that's our CSS class, FL hyphen row hyphen pricing hyphen standard. And let's save. Okay, now let's give our partner pricing row a class. Again, the wrench icon, the advanced tab, go down to the CSS class and FL row pricing and we'll just replace standard with partner. Save that. Okay, so there's our two rows with our two different pricings and they both have different CSS classes. So let's click done and then publish changes and this is gonna save what we've just done in Beaver Builder. Okay, awesome, and there's our pricing page as it stands. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to hide this by default. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to uh, the functions.php file in our child theme. So I'm just gonna pause this video and then go to it. Uh, you can access this using control panel or FTP. Okay, so I'm in my functions.php file now, and there's some code on the blog post, so if you're watching this video on YouTube or somewhere else that it's embedded, go to the blog post and paste in the following code. This will be on that blog post. So let's review this code, okay? So it's one function, and it's only about 12 lines of code, so it's relatively simple. But let's just go through it. Add filter, body class, baby body class, Okay, so if you're not familiar with um, action hooks or filter hooks, uh, we do have a tutorial on beyondbeaver.com. Just go into there and into the search bar, type in hooks, and you'll find a tutorial on how to use them. Uh, but just to run you through this one, so body class is actually a built-in WordPress uh, filter. So you can find it here. I'll link this again in the description below on the blog post. Uh, and you can see it here. So. Uh, the body class filter is used to filter the classes that are assigned to the body HTML element. So all this is pretty much saying, if you do read this, is it's a list of items that are put onto the body onto the class of the body HTML item. What do we mean by that? Let's go back to our page and we'll just inspect element. We know that our website is contained in the HTML uh, tag. The head is where all our scripts go, so we can expand that, you know, the meta, the, the links to the style sheets, all those sort of things. And then our actual website is in the body element. Now WordPress by default adds some classes to this body element. You can see here, body class equals, so uh, page, so the post type of the page that we're viewing. So this is a page. Uh, if you were viewing a blog post, it would say post. Uh, the ID of the page or the post, the template that you're using, whether the user is logged in or logged out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new class to this body element uh, if there is a parameter up here. So, what, so basically what we're gonna do is if this is in the URL, so if this plan equals partner, we're gonna add a, a new class to the body element that says it's partner pricing, that we wanna show the partner pricing table. And then using CSS, when the body has our new class, it's gonna hide this and it's gonna show this. So that's what we're about to do. So if we go back to our functions.php file and go through this function, so this pretty much says, uh, we, we, we wanna add a new class to the body element using this function, and this is a function here. 
and this function takes uh, an array. If you don't know what an array is, uh, don't worry for now, just copy and paste the function from the blog post and, and you can tweak uh, what you need. But you can go back here and it, it actually tells you, note classes is an array. An array is just a list of items. So here, uh, add filter, body class, do this function. So if, so this is how you access a variable in the URL. So if we go back, question mark, when you put a question mark in your URL, it means you're, you're trying to add some variables there. And then we're saying the variable plan equals the value partner. So to get this value, you use, you use the currency symbol underscore get. So these have to be uppercase and then the square brackets and then inside them, uh, single quotes and the name of the variable. So we're saying if this variable is set, so if the URL does have a question mark plan, get the value of it and put it into this variable here, this PHP variable. And then if that variable equals partner, add to the body classes array pricing hyphen partner. If it doesn't, so if that variable isn't set, which means if it's just forward slash pricing, so our default URL, then add pricing hyphen standard. Okay, awesome. Now, if you have any questions about this in a bit more detail, uh, comment below on the blog post or the video, and I'll try my best to explain it. It is a little bit of PHP. Um, you can research it, it's good to know this. I use this a lot, this function. Um, but if you don't know, it, copy and paste it and just change what you obviously know you need to change. So for instance, uh, if you're trying to set up a new variable instead of plan, you will just come in here and replace plan with your new variable. So let's just save that and we'll go back to here and we'll just reload the page. Okay, so that function's now executing. And then let's just inspect element. And on our body, we can see that for the class, it has added pricing standard as we wanted. Why? Because there is no variable set under up there. And we know that if it's set, it adds pricing partner, but if it's not set, which is the case that we have now, it adds pricing standard. Now let's just go ahead and add that variable. So uh, question mark plan equals pricing and press enter. And then if we inspect element, because we have that variable up there, body class equals pricing hyphen partner. So it's doing the partner now. So it's saying if it's set plan, which we know that it is, plan is in there. If it's set, add pricing hyphen partner, which is why it's outputting it there. Now that's working. Our variable is being taken from here and a class is being added to the body element. So now we can use CSS to hide stuff. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna edit the style.css in your child theme or wherever else you add your CSS. I recommend style.css, so I'm gonna go there now. Uh, again, using FTP or the control panel, I'll use my C panel. Okay, so I'm in my style.css inside my child theme. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to hide the partner pricing table by default. So to do that, we'll just go back in and we'll just click on the partner pricing to get the CSS class for this row. Advanced tab, so there it is, fl hyphen row hyphen pricing hyphen partner. And we're just gonna go back to our style.css and we're gonna do dot fl hyphen row hyphen pricing hyphen partner. So the CSS class, so that's our row. Display none, which means hide it. So let's save that. And then let's reload our page. And there it is. So that's hidden by default. You don't see our partner pricing. Okay, and now we wanna handle showing the partner pricing if the variable is set in the URL. So let's just add the variable because by doing that, now our body class will have that CSS class of pricing hyphen partner and that will allow us 
to uh, troubleshoot as we do add our CSS. So let's copy that partner pricing hyphen partner and let's just go back here and we'll say body dot so if the body has the class pricing partner then we want to hide the standard so the row with the standard pricing table we want to hide And then we want to show the partner pricing. So then the partner we want to display. And because it's a row, it will display block. And let's click save. Now that that's saved, let's go back to our page. The URL has our plan uh, variable. And we'll just refresh the page. And there's our partner pricing. And then we'll remove the URL so it's just this, the normal URL, so the one that everyone sees, and it's a standard pricing. So I'll just go ahead and add that URL again, that URL variable, plan equals partner. Refresh it, partner pricing. And that's all there is. And again, just to recap, you can use this in any way. The possibilities are endless. Uh, I have used this for a lot of times. The benefits are you don't have to create a separate page. Now there will be times where you do need to create a page. Um, if these different pricing packages had a different set of FAQ, different terms, uh, different refund policy, all those sort of things, I would create two separate pages because it's just going to be, it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, and it just, it just be easier to manage. But here, if you're just changing the, the pricing table or something really simple, that could be a hide or show sort of conditional, then it's a very powerful way to do it. Now, I wouldn't recommend uh, hiding a lot of content with this because it's the content still does have to get loaded into the page. Uh, but I mean, having this, this little row with a little pricing table toggle on and off, it's not really gonna matter. Uh, but if you're hiding 10 different rows and then showing 10 different rows uh, conditionally, that means the page has to load the 20, but then hide 10, it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, just to sort of show you guys what I mean, this is a part, the partner pricing page here. So you can see in the code, uh, we have two rows. So there's our pricing standard, which is display none, so hidden, and our pricing partner, which is shown. If we just unhide this, so they're both still being loaded onto the page, but one's being hidden, one's being shown. So it still is rendering that, uh, but I mean, it's not gonna make a difference to load speed with just this one little thing. So it is a very, very handy way for where you need to tweak things, based on the URL parameter. It's probably the shortest video I've ever done for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below on the blog post or the YouTube video. Uh, subscribe, like us on Twitter. Um, I'm pushing Twitter quite hard, I'm enjoying it. It's actually becoming my favorite social media channel. So if you are on it, follow me and give me a tweet and I'll reply, it'll make my day. If you have any requests for videos, you can get me on the beyondbeaver.com contact page. Uh, but that's all for today and I have to get back to filming my online course and get it and stop getting distracted by all these cool things that I want to show you guys. Thank you and until next time.